The European Union has decided to implement a battery passport as part of a broader initiative to enhance, so they say, sustainability, safety and the transparency of batteries. I'll get into this in a minute. Uh, so this decision is grounded in several key objectives. And uh, before I go into them, I'm Ben Alexander. Welcome to the channel. I make EV news videos almost every day. So please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below uh, or just pause it at any time and just write your thoughts. The apparent key objectives put out by the EU with reference to the battery passport, uh, which actually ties to any EV battery above two kilowatt hour and is tied to the vehicle's VIN number. Uh, improving traceability and transparency. The battery passport is digital, is a digital document uh, that contains very detailed information about the battery's composition. Uh, so what chemistry is it? The origin and life cycle. Uh, the initiative aims to increase transparency in the battery supply chain. And this is the angle that they want the public to see. Just like with all things from you know governments around the world, they have a government, uh, a thing that they want, the they want the public to think, and then they've got often other reasons. So this allows consumers to make more informed decisions is encouraging manufacturers to adopt sustainable practices. And it's a step towards ensuring that batteries are produced, used and disposed of in an environmentally responsible manner. And uh, as it is now, by and large, a uh, Tesla can be crashed, taken to a car dismantlers, and then have this big you know, battery, as far as I can tell, uh, and they can unscrew it from the car and just flog it off quite cheaply. I've seen them for sale. I've called them up with the potential of buying them, you know, eight, eight, nine thousand dollars for a big Tesla battery. Um, you know, there's no record of anything other than just you buy something with cash and there's a receipt, you know, nothing else. So that's, that will no doubt change in the future because there's an inherent value, of course, to a battery. I can see there being a maximum life cycle approved or you know and then they might deem them a bit dangerous to make you then having to you know keep buying them potentially i don't know or a tax on resale etc etc and as you can see this isn't likely to be helping you or me just the eu not nobody else so if you want to use a tesla battery then you'll probably you know quite possibly have to uh, pay some money to apply to fit it into your conversion and show documents about what battery it is and how much you know how much use it's had potentially you know uh, it doesn't take a genius to work out why they're doing this so just like the road user charge, uh, they start at a low price to get you used to the idea, a bit of a soft blow. Uh, they get you used to the idea of paying, say, for example, two cents per kilowatt hour, uh, sorry, two cents per kilometer, and then they up it. Uh, so I did mention this in a recent video, actually, about a certain government announcing a low charge to use the roads per kilometer, and then they upped it twice in the first month. And uh, I think it was, yeah, first month, first month and a bit. And especially in certain places where you are in an apparent police state, if you have to tell, you know, if they tell you to pay something, you have to pay it. You know, there's no getting around that for sure. So the second key objective uh, is enforcing sustainable practices. That's the, you know, second key. Enforcing sustainable practices is the second key objective from the EU. So the battery passport will play a crucial role in enforcing EU regulations related to the use of sustainable materials and meeting uh, recycling targets. So manufacturers will also be required to provide information about the origin of raw metals and the environmental impact of the production of the battery or the materials. So this approach is intended to incentivize uh, more sustainable practices in the battery industry, uh, you know, which is happening all over the world and just getting much larger in the next year and the next year and the next year it's getting massive really really big of course so you know including the use of materials that are easy to reuse and recycle therefore uh, reducing the overall environmental impact of batteries uh, compliance with regulations the battery passport is part of a regulatory regulatory framework uh, that seeks to standardize the documentation of a product's environmental impact throughout its life cycle and it ensures uh, compliance with regional battery regulations and thereby facilitating market access and minimizing potential legal barriers so this is uh, this compliance is essential for battery companies to operate smoothly in different jurisdictions it's just something that's very 
there's just very little rules on this stuff as it is now. So starting date, the implementation of the battery passport uh, will begin in phases from this year actually, 2024, and manufacturers in Europe must disclose the carbon footprint as well of their batteries and from 2027 they will have to comply with carbon dioxide emissions limits, uh, which is an interesting one. So there are serious concerns about uh, control with regards to this, and for sure this is something I'm looking at. Uh, while the EU's introduction of the battery passport is primarily focused on sustainability and regulatory, regulatory compliance, some might view it as another method of control, particularly in terms of industry regulation and market access and uh, you know the, requir the requirement for detailed information on batteries could be seen as increasing bureaucratic oversight basically and I would agree with that honestly. Uh, however the primary aim is to promote sustainability and transparency in the battery industry and rather than control the population. So obviously they told us this so there's no need to question anything is there? Uh, so they also go on to say that the Battery Passport Initiative reflects the EU's commitment to fostering a sustainable battery ecosystem, which is vital in the tran transition towards uh, more sustainable energy sources and practices. And uh, it's a move towards ensuring that the batteries powering our, you know, our cars and electronic devices are produced in not just produced, but produced and disposed of in a way that minimizes harm to the environment and puts less, uh, you know, crap in the air, basically. So I haven't fully decided what I think of this yet, because I can see that there's obviously a good th good thing about it, but then there is the control issue, isn't there? So uh, I'm I'm really keen to know what you all think. Anyone at all, if you want to write something in, in the comments, feel free. That would be uh, very interesting to read what you have to say. But I know a fair few of you. You know, a, few, a handful of people that watch, and uh, you always write fantastic comments and stuff. I'm really keen to know what you have to say, uh, so please write it in the comments and let us all know what you all think because it um, seems to me like another way to just control stuff, you know. But I can also imagine, uh, you know, there are going to be some benefits to this scheme, but it just, you know, accountability that it might bring about a sense of accountability to the people that are producing batteries, and uh, it, you know. It isn't a time to be ignorant in 2024, I don't think. Loads of weird stuff going on all over the world. Um, so I've also heard from two sources that the BYD Seagull is definitely going to uh, be on offer in Spain and India this year, 2024. So I'm waiting for a reply from BYD to see what they have to say. I will let you all know about that in, the co uh, you know, in another video whenever that comes. Thank you for watching and I hope it wasn't uh, too long or boring for you, but it is generally, I think, a really interesting topic and I did want to make some sort of video about it.